All right, Wolf from Hey, you're outside again. Yeah, oh, it's actually so much nicer to be outside and under these temperatures. Normally I live in Seattle and as I've just heard, we have rain and here we have 30 degrees Celsius or nice. 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah. it's a great place to be. Uh, Absolutely. And it's particularly fantastic if you have so nice uh, people around you like yourself and yeah. our new guest. Excellent. And who's that? Okay, so I'm, this time I'm here with uh, Grigory Russell. Hi, I'm Grigory Russell. So uh, Grigory comes from the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign nice. and is a professor who works, uh, works in computer science. Okay. And what he really works on is actually semantics and term rewriting and verification and model checking, so all fancy stuff. <laughs> and I thought we'll talk a little bit with him what's going on in the space. Excellent. Well, let's do it. So, so maybe I'll start with a funny story at the beginning. So, um, I started studying computer science in uh, 1981 and I had to take a course in theoretical computer science. And the professor at the time said, he introduced me to algebraic specification and term rewriting and said, oh, in 10 years from now, so 1991, everybody will do it. So I, I finished my PhD around that time. Nobody was doing it. Ah. 10 years later, 2001, nobody is doing it. 2011, oh, actually, in between, I found Grigori. And Grigori has done some fast, fantastic work. So it, Sometimes it needs 30 years before things really start to shine. So maybe we'll talk to Grigori and see what happens next. Excellent. So, so maybe my first question to Grigori would be is, so tell me a little bit, what is actually term rewriting and uh, how does it relate to functional programming and to imperative programming? So. Okay, so as the name says, it's all about writing terms. <laughs> um, so uh, that means that you uh, have some way to specify or to define terms in your, uh, in your language of interest. And then uh, rewriting, term rewriting is about matching patterns of interest on these uh, terms, on this uh, structure, and uh, saying how you modify those patterns. Okay. For example, a simple rule could be zero times x rewrites to zero. Okay, so that, that, uh, that sounds uh, like, uh, yeah, very reasonable. So you can describe in some sense all kind of funny things like, for example, abstract syntax trees. So syntax trees that a compiler produces as terms, yes. and then you can rewrite them. Yes, so that's actually a particularly very easy um, context in the sense that uh, the parsers would already give you, the parser programming languages would already give you um, programs as terms. Um, all you need to do now is to put these uh, programs as terms in the appropriate environment and then rewrite them in that appropriate environment and this way uh, do computation by writing. In fact, rewriting is a Turing complete uh, computational paradigm. So you can compute anything you want to writing. In particular, you can give some of these programming languages and mimic the execution of programming languages, of programs in programming languages by writing. So then, uh, if I understand you correctly, so what you're really doing is you're giving an operational semantics to a programming language. Exactly. And the operations are described by taking this abstract syntax tree that has uh, loops and if then else and assignment and you're rewriting the program continuously until you precisely, get to a result? Precisely, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so actually what, all you have to do really is to add, to add one or two rewrite rules, let's say per language construct in your uh, programming language of interest, and then have rules saying how to rewrite that particular language construct in the appropriate uh, context in the configuration. Right? Because for some statements you need more than the program, like yeah, assignment. Yeah. You need to know what is the, uh, what, where to write the value of x, which you assign a value to, into the state or the uh, heap. So, so that sounds uh, abstract and cool, but if I think about, uh, we have already compilers that execute programs. Why do I actually need an operational semantics using term rewriting, something that I don't know yet? So what, what's in it for me? Well, um, I think the simplest way to look at it is that um, a writing semantics gives you a mathematical model for your programming language. In other words, every single step, computational step that takes place in your program corresponds to a math well-understood mathematical um, uh, operation. 
So that gives you the big benefit that you can reason about programs. A compiler is specifically concerned on getting uh, programs executed fast, but no more than that. So if you want to reason about programs, you need the formal semantics of a programming language, and writing is an excellent uh, vehicle to, to get that. Okay, so uh, now I have uh, such a semantics. Can I have a semantics for languages like C that are sequential, but then have funny undefinedness issues? And can I have semantics for concurrent languages, Java with threads or C sharp with threads? So, so what can I describe? Can I describe arbitrary languages? So, so can you tell me what's the scope of? It? So with, with the appropriate methodologies on how to do it, the answer is yes, you can do it. And as a matter of fact, it has been done already. For example, for C, there is currently uh, an almost complete semantics of the language, which has uh, like 850 rules, each of them corresponding to particular computational steps that happen uh, in the C language. And uh, uh, the same has been done for a fragment of Java, uh, for even for hardware languages like Verilog. <laughs> so oh, wow. th there, are, there are formal definitions of these languages and one very, very nice thing about, about the writing is that it is particularly suitable for concurrent languages because the writing is by its very nature concurrent. Think, for example, of this nice wind here in nice, this nice weather, what it does to the trees, right? So the trees move, they transform under a certain uh, pattern. And um, all these trees, just, they just move concurrently. You have to do something artificial to interleave the operations because they happen truly concurrently and this is what writing is about you can do uh, transformations concurrently okay so that 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 sounds really cool so if i now have a uh, concurrent semantics and you said what i really uh, get out of it is a better understanding of my program and maybe i get some tools out of it so what are the benefits if I have now an operational semantics? What can I do with it? So that helps me in my development practices or understanding my programs or? So, um, one of the major benefits of having the semantics, as you mentioned, is really to understand your programming language better. But that is useful up to a point. You can't do that much. A, a manual could be just good enough for understanding uh, you know, the language. But one cool thing about um, particularly about writing semantics is that you can use it to reason about programs in your programming language. For example, uh, you can model check programs using the semantics because you can simply explore all the state space that the program in a concrete configuration can be written to. So you can see all the behaviors of the program and this way you can explore like, even exhaustively all the state space of the program when that is possible. Or if you use matching logic, for example, you can verify programs using the actual semantics of the programming language. So, so um, you mentioned two terms that might not be so familiar, model checking on the one hand and verification on the other. So let me understand model checking. So that in some sense unfolds the program to a certain degree and then if I have an assertion, then it simply checks whether that assertion holds at that time and uh, you use, uh, is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. So model checking is uh, looking, in simplistic terms, is like looking at all possible behaviors of your uh, program by simply exploring, going through all these behaviors, um, ah, okay. either concretely or abstractly, but let's suppose that you do it concretely. Okay. Uh, so you simply, so a compiler will only give you a program that will execute. Yeah. Now imagine a smarter compiler which gives you all possible ways to execute a program, because programs sometimes are non-deterministic. Yeah, yeah, the non-determinism yeah, yeah. can appear for different reasons. So how, how, how could you know everything which could happen, for example, with a C program? Maybe there are certain computations which are undefined, or maybe there are uh, behaviors that you didn't expect. So a model checker allows you to explore all possible behaviors. Ah, okay, so, so instead of looking at one path at a time, as a compiler look. does, I look at all the paths all the path. yes. and in you the can program certain, at the same and time. And you can check a certain property on every single path, suppose a data race, you don't want to see data races or deadlocks. Okay. You can check all possible paths and if it doesn't happen on any path, the best thing doesn't happen on any path, then the program is correct. So then, for example, you could have different memory models where you can say, oh, uh, I have now a weak memory model where in some sense I can uh, reorder reads and writes and therefore 
I can explore all the different behaviors, uh, whether it runs the same program on the ARM, does it behave differently if it runs on an Intel processor? This is, this is particularly a very interesting uh, situation where you would really like to have a semantics of a programming language. Because it would be very hard to, 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 uh, to experiment with such memory models in compilers. You can only see the errors if they happen. But yeah, in a yeah. semantics, if you plug into the semantics of the language, the memory model that you're interested in, then you can see different behaviors of your program under different memory models. So this way you can check the correctness of your program under different memory models. So this ah. is where you actually want a modular, a modular semantic framework, actually, where it allows you to plug and play language yeah, features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, okay, so, so that means that you can actually nicely prototype new languages, new memory models, yes, new yes. threading concepts. Yes, and, and that, that's and particularly useful if you're interested in domain-specific languages, because it may take you a long time to actually implement a compiler yeah, in a domain-specific yeah, yeah, yeah. language. Well, if you uh, have a nice and uh, modular semantic framework that you can define the semantics of the language and then run programs in the semantics. And if your right engine that executes the right rules is efficient enough, then you may not even need to implement a compiler too soon for the language because yeah, yeah, yeah. a fast interpreter could be just good enough, particularly for domain specific languages. Yeah. And we've recently seen lots of fast, fast interpreters for, for JavaScript, for example, and so on. So you actually mentioned something else that I found interesting. You mentioned a new term that I don't know yet, is that matching logic. So um, I understand that in some sense it's still the holy grail of computer science to build verifiers. Uh, but uh, now you say, is, oh, you have maybe a trick to build verifiers much easier and quicker and that deals with new, with the existing problems that other calculus, like all calculus have. You can deal with that now with matching logic, which builds on this rewriting. Can you explain what matching um, logic is? Yes, yes. So in, um, in, in a few words, matching logic is using the executable semantics, writing semantics of your programming language, uh, together with logical reasoning. And this way, reason about programs as opposed to just execute them. Uh, and one benefit of writing here is, um, is that rewrite rules can apply either on concrete program configurations where you have like x bound to three, y bound to seven, or to symbolic program configurations. For example, if you try to verify a function and the function has input, you don't know exactly what is the input uh, that the function is going to be called with. So then you have to work with symbolic uh, configurations and symbolic uh, uh, values. And the right rules apply just as well in a symbolic universe as they apply in a concrete universe. So that is the bridge towards verification, actually. Because now you can use the formal semantics for programming language together with appropriate reasoning and uh, verify programs. And that's what matching logic is, actually. It's, uh, Wow. Okay, so, so uh, <laughs> matching logic is taking an operational semantics that you have defined with uh, rewriting rules and, and uh, et massaging it a little bit and building a verifier out of it. Yes. So now you yeah. know that actually the verifier agrees with the semantics and you don't have two exactly. complementary exactly. worlds. In fact, in, fact, in fact, that is almost right. <laughs> so uh, matching logic is really about reasoning about configurations. So you don't really need the programming language semantics in order to talk about matching logic. So matching logic allows you to do reasoning with configurations. All you need to know is the structure of your program configuration in the semantics. But you don't need to know yet the semantics precisely. Okay. And now, like any other logic, program logic, you can use it also if you want in a whole style, uh, whole logic style. Meaning that you can use it to state preconditions and postconditions. Like uh, that means under what conditions a certain piece of code does a certain thing. Yeah. So you can use it that way. But since everything we do is built on writing, we also use the writing methodology to do uh, verification using matching logic. So in the end, what matching logic boils down to really is uh, about doing rewriting in a symbolic uh, universe using the actual semantics of the programming language. And in order to apply semantic rules, you may need to rearrange your configuration yeah, to a yeah, logically yeah. equivalent configuration. And this is where the matching logic machinery helps. Because okay. it allows you to rearrange the configuration so you can perform the next computational step. 
and that's all you need in order to verify programs, actually. <laughs> wow, okay, so, so uh, I think so you Grigor can retire. <laughs> Grigori is smiling, I think we are done here. <laughs> but, but let me say one thing, is that, so whenever people say, oh, we also need a semantics, then, and, and now we write that in, in term rewriting, logic, um, the question is still, what does this semantic have to do with the real thing? So how do you guarantee that your semantics actually agrees with, uh, with what uh, the GNU compiler does for C or the Microsoft compiler does for the same program? Because we know that sometimes they disagree. So how does so you that... Are, you are definitely right, because if you have a, sem a wrong semantics, <laughs> then uh, all the tools which are based on the semantics are wrong at the same time. Yeah. Um, and like anything big, a semantics is big, and like anything big, can be wrong yeah, and in yeah, fact yeah. most of the time semantics are wrong because people do not uh, envision all possible special cases so what we do well we do what we typically do with big things we test them <laughs> so, so that's a big benefit of having an executable semantics because you can run it on tens of thousands of programs typically programs that uh, compiler developers use in their test suites of the compilers you can run them in the semantics and um, again, you never know whether the semantics is correct, but you can have a high degree of confidence after being able to run 10,000 programs um, and getting the right thing that maybe your semantics is correct. Not to mention that each rule, each, uh, each uh, language construct is defined by one or two rules and the rules are completely orthogonal. So um, if you have a bug, it will be in one of the rules and shouldn't affect the other rules because uh, the methodology that is being used is very modular in nature. So, so, in some sense, for and what we've learned is that for semantics, the best way is actually to make them executable. Yes, because and, you can test them this way. Yes, and, and then and then you want to use precisely that semantics that you tested as a core for program yeah. verification. If you encode a projection of that semantics in um, uh, in your program verifier, there's a high chance that you'll get it wrong. And as a matter of fact, we have seen. I know this is hard to believe, but we have seen many program verifiers proving wrong programs correct. And that's because they <laughs> encode the wrong semantics of the programming language. Okay. So uh, then, then I'm really happy that I've met you and that uh, we know now how we can move forward uh, since you solved some of the problems. <laughs> so I really want to thank you uh, for the time to talk to us. And thank you. Uh, it has been a pleasure to hear about term rewriting, matching, logic. And now I know that after 30 years, I actually learned the right stuff uh, a long, long time ago. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Wolfram, and thank you for your interest in algebraic uh, techniques. We think they have a future. Their time has come. All right. Wonderful. Cool. <laughs> Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. Cheers.